and it's going to be a ring pour <laughs> hi everyone and welcome for today's video yes it's a ring pour and you can see the colors that i'm going to use here this is mostly artina again so the brand that i'm using most often it's a gold a yellow a metallic green which is not from artina a lighter blue a white a metallic purple which is the same brand than the green is a metallic silver and my almost loved phthalocyanine blue those are all the colors that i'm using here and yes it's going to be more colorful than most of my works because i mostly stay more on the bluish side i wanted to use all these colors here and the reason why this is also for cindy <laughs> Remember two videos back when she commissioned me for four pieces in total? So as she was or is one of my most early followers, so she joined me when I was at 300, I think, followers in total. And so she stayed with me all the time. And I'm super happy that she ordered something from me and commissioned me and Patrick. <laughs> and so I decided to make a special one for her just to say thank you, so to speak. And as I was about to ship the commission anyways, it was perfect because I could put it into the same package. So the canvas that I'm doing here is a 50 centimeter round one. Colors were mixed. It's as usual, two parts of the acrylic binder, one part ish of the color and some water if needed. I did not add silicone to any of these paints. And yeah, this is basically the mixture that I'm working with. Depending on the thickness of your colors and the kind of color that you're using, you might need more water or less water. Also depending on the consistency of the medium that you use. So if you use the floor tool, which is way thinner than the acrylic binder that I'm using here, or whatever medium that you choose to work with. If you've made a couple of pours yourself, you will know your most perfect consistency to work with. I never really measure anything, it's all eyeballed. So sometimes the mixture is a bit thinner, sometimes the mixture is a bit thicker, sometimes it works better than other times, but I really don't measure anything. So this is just the way I do it. It, it should feel genuine to you and you should feel good with and yeah, just w whatever you like working with. And besides this, you can see me also here using my scrape up paint again. So the grayish paint that I scrape up from all my pores, the drip of paint and put them into a large jar. This is the jar you can see here. It is pretty messy as you can see. And I have this little white small kitchen sieve, which I use to sift the paint through. Again, in case you have not seen me do this, I do this to avoid any chunks and blobs of stuff that is swimming around in the scrape up paint just to have it clean and smooth on the surface. Because if you scrape up your drip of paints and depending on how long you, you wait until you scrape it off, sometimes parts are already starting to dry, sometimes there are some chunks of paint in there. And this is really nothing you want to have on your fresh poured artwork because sometimes you don't even see them when you pour those little clumps and such. But when the paint is drying, you can see them in the end and sometimes it doesn't really look so pleasing. So I sift this through every now and then and I just use this as a base layer paint. Just have in mind, I put all my paints into one jar so there is paint with or without silicone in there. I just mix it everything together. So there is some silicone sitting in there. Not so much, but there is. So keep in mind when you use this as a base layer paint and you pour something over it, it might happen that some of the silicone pops through and creates the cells. If this happens, of course, it can happen that the base layer paint shows through as well. In this case, the neutral gray, which you might not want to have. So just keep in mind when you use the base layer paint and you have silicone in there that it might show up occasionally. So far, it didn't really occur in my artworks so much. So there are some spots where I can see this, but when it's dry, it's, it's pretty dark. So you don't really see it as a gray in the end. But just to be on the safe side, if you make a thin pour or have your color that you pour over it pretty thin, it, the risk is higher that it pops through. So if your pour is thick, you, know, you should be safe. But besides of all the preparation, <laughs> I just poured all my paints into my pouring jar. This is a regular pouring jar. I used quite a bit of paint. It was about 400 milliliters. And this is basically a triple the amount of paint that I would use for a canvas of this size when I make a regular ring pour. 
Um, I'm really not good in measuring pains and knowing how much I will need for a pour, but you can get different effects by using them. If you use too much paint and make the ring pour and don't stretch it that much, you will have many sweet thin lines, so thin rings basically, which might look really cool as well. If you have less paint and stretch it more, you have larger rings which look more like my planet pours, like the Saturn ones and such that I did. So the more you stretch your paint, the more this design occurs. As I wanted to use all the colors in this pour that Cindy has in her room, I wanted to use them all and I just wanted to have a design with many very thin and hopefully cool looking lines in the end. So as most of these colors are kind of metallics, I hope to get this shimmer when everything is dry, which you of course cannot see in the beginning stages when the paints are still red. So each of these metallic paints, especially when they are mixed with a medium, which is white, which the float roll for example is, which my acrylic binder is, and basically all the others that I've ever used, yeah, they look kind of milky and way more saturated than they are when they are dry. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. I have told this a couple of times before, you must know your paints. So you must know how your paint look when they are dry, because this is so much different than the way they look when they are wet. So if you are super happy with your wet result pour and you see a result bumped and might be surprised how different it looks, I always recommend knowing how your paints are going to react when they are drying, just to be on the good side to know when everything is dry. You know what I want to say? So it is the one thing being super happy about the, the red freshly poured result and the other knowing what the colors will do in the end when they are dry. I always try to think about how colors will look when they are dry, just to not be so surprised in the end about the result. Of course you never know what comes out when you make the pour, so as I often tell, although you have a goal in mind and the way you want to look it like, most often times it doesn't look like. <laughs> but but anyways, and when this was done, I just started pouring everything on the canvas. You do not have to start in the middle, you can start at any position of your canvas where you want to pour, or where you want to start off. It just influences the entire design a bit in the end. So if you start in an edge and pour everything down towards the other side, your colors will stretch of course a bit different than if you pour everything in the middle. If you pour everything in the middle, you will have this empty cup blob in the middle, so where the rest amount of paint comes out and forms the kind of effect there. And as I did so, so many of these ring pours, and they are basically all the same, I let you watch the video in real time and don't sped up, in case you want to see how fast or not fast I'm going to tilt everything. So enjoy watching and I will get back to you when everything is done.
So, and here we go. <laughs> what do you think? Do you like the design in the red face? I pretty much liked it. I used my torch when everything was poor just to pop some air bubbles that are in there. So this was not meant to bring any silicone from the down layers up. So this was not a plan. Just to pop some air bubbles because when they pop when it's drying naturally it looks kind of weird sometimes. So I like to pop these cells when everything is still red and can flow together again. Yeah, and this is how it looks like. You will see the dried version in the end, of course. It is also varnished at this point, and I really, really like how this one turned out. The blue, of course, got way darker. The gold got way more shimmery and created these little three lines. The center blob is just super gorgeous this time. And the metallics, so is read. I really like how it looks. And I can't wait to hear again what you think. And of course, I can't wait to hear what you think, Cindy. <laughs> if you like this one as well or as much as the others. And I hope it will find a sweet place in your home. If you have any questions about the materials that I've used or my social media, everything is linked down below in the video description. If you would love to join me on my Patreon, where I have some special videos and live videos coming the next month. So I just set everything up. And I would be super happy, of course, if you decided to join me there as well, just to get in touch even closer than we can do here on YouTube. So if you want to adapt some of my artworks for yourself, I also have an Etsy shop where you can get some of my already finished artworks, which you can all see here in the videos as well. And yeah, enough self-advertising for now. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you liked what I did. If so, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not done so far. Also have a look at all my other videos. There are pretty sweet results already there in over 210 or so videos now. This really would mean a lot to me. And if you like, also share this with your friends, family and everyone who would like to see what I did. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. And other than that, I hope to see you in my next videos. Have a great day. Bye bye.